So uh, let me take the opportunity to welcome you to today's session. It's a privilege, as Thank I've you. always been saying. Uh, I think online meetings are, are not that simple. There are a lot of hurdles to, uh, to jump. But so far, so good. We are now in lesson 11, and I think we are doing quite well. So I just want to request Mr. Njao to open for us with a word of prayer, and then we just get into the lesson uh, straight away. Mr. Njao, please. Oh, Mr. Njao has, I think has disconnected. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we bless you for this day. Thank you for giving us such a wonderful opportunity. And we pray that as we go through this session, you will be able to quicken our hearts, to be able to understand the power of vision in leadership so that we can offer the kind of leadership that uh, is pleasing to you and the kind of leadership that will bring transformation uh, to the people that we are leading and also that it will bring glory to your name. We thank you and we honor you take full control in the entire session as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So uh, probably for the sake of uh, Pastor Kahindi, we have with us uh, Mr. Charles Gishuru, who is a student uh, in this class. Gishuru, can you hear me? Yeah, I think I can see him uh, signaling me. Uh, I think he can hear. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Elise, are you there? Mm -hmm. Mr. Elise. Yeah, Ms. we also have uh, Mr. Elise. Mr. Elise is uh, from Rwanda and is part of this uh, group. So we have been talking about uh, the power of vision in leadership. And this is part two. We started part one uh, last week. Now we are in part two. And we today we want to conclude this session so that we can be able to move to the other sessions that uh, are remaining. So those who are following the manual, we are on page 66. Uh, I don't know, Pastor, if you have this manual, the becoming a group. No, no, no. no. So maybe for today we just take your own notes, uh, but yeah. uh, normally we we normally flow together. There are some blanks which we, we fill as we continue, and uh, the subtopic that we are dealing with today is the leadership principles on vision. We're talking about the leadership principles on vision, and they're about uh, uh, twelve leadership uh, principles on vision that we want to look at uh, in this first part. So the first principle we are looking at is uh, those who have the manual, the first blank, we are talking about vision energizes the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, when you capture a true vision, it, it, it takes over takes over the entire system of a person. Uh, it, it takes over the, the thinking you realize most of the time you are really engrossed into the vision that you are pursuing. So uh, it's an inspiring picture of the future that will energize the whole system of uh, the person. I think if you have really experienced or you are in the midst or you have captured your, a vision, a true vision, you realize it becomes like your drive. The entire people are all about it. So it energizes the mind, the will, and the emotion. In other words, it takes over your, your system. And uh, the second principle, the leadership principle on vision, is that lack of vision is worse, worse than being blind. These are words of uh, Helen Keller. Helen Keller was a renowned author from US. She was blind, she was dumb, but she was an author and she did great work. And uh, when she was asked 
what is worse than having no eyes? This is what she said. She said that the only thing worse than being blind is having sight, but no vision. And I think this is a very powerful word. Uh, and not just words from anybody. These were words, someone who had an experience of not having physical eyes, but uh, she had captured uh, a divine vision. So lack of vision is really worse than uh, being blind based on those words. So vision gives hope. And even in this midst, what we have been encouraging leaders is that we'll be able to take over the people we are leading through this season if we keep on uh, projecting the future, the, the, the vision, projecting the, that vision, that, that reality that is not current. So we need to still show people the canon and to show them that in, that, in the canon there is milk and there is honey. So this might be a wilderness, mm -hmm. But it's, it's a journey. We are on our way to the Canaan where we'll be able to get the milk. And that picture is very important. So a vision will always give hope because the current prevailing situation do not become our destination because we have a vision and it is, uh, it, it is our big focus. And uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, he said, without vision, sight has no hope. Because so sometimes all around us, there might be no hope, but a vision will give us that hope. Uh, number four, without vision, the people perish. I think this is a common and a very important uh, scripture uh, from Proverbs 29, 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So basically, most of the challenges that we are facing now, starting from families, organization, uh, individuals, purely, if we analyze them, we can link them to issues of vision. Because if a family has a, a, a common vision you're pursuing, then there is a unity. And some of the common, or let me call them petty challenges, may not be really big challenge, because there's something bigger that we are pursuing together. So this is really key. Without vision, the people perish. Vision is the source of inspiration and motivation. In the definition of leadership, vision is core because we lead through influence, but that influence is based on inspiration. People follow willingly because they have been inspired. And the inspiration has to come from something they can see. That is a vision. So uh, vision is a source of inspiration and motivation. So that is uh, number five. If you are feeling your blanks, number five, uh, what I've marked uh, in bold, that is what you're supposed to feel in number five. And then we have number six. Number six, uh, we are talking about um, vision is a source of value. Yeah, vision is a source of value. I think a person who has captured a vision is a valuable, it has some value. So vision will always help or uplift others by adding value. And it's designed to make the lives of humankind better and to improve society. So what we, are, we, are, we mean here, people who have captured vision, there is a way they, they generate inspiration in others. If you spend a few minutes with someone who is a visionary leader, you will be inspired and you will feel valuable. Actually, they make you feel more valuable than sometimes you are weighing or, or you measure up yourself. So vision is a source of value. Uh -huh. Mr. Njau, you can hear me. Just want to confirm. Thank you, still out. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Elze, okay, so uh, those are some of the few principles we've been talking about or we, we, we're looking at when you're talking about leadership principles on vision. The, uh, number seven, you're talking about vision gives foresight because it's the ability to see things 
as they are, not really as they are now. Yeah, as they are now, it might not be maybe what we anticipate or what we we like. But vision will tell us this is where you are, but this is where you are going. So a visionary leader, and uh, in the crisis leadership, I'm talking about if this is a time we really need to paint the picture because sometimes when people are in a crisis, they even forget that they have ever been in such kind of scenarios. It consumes us. So we need to keep on reminding people that uh, and painting that picture, either at an organizational level or at individual level, at whatever capacity. And Miles Monroe, I think you can read the words of Miles Monroe. Sight is the ability to see things as they are, but vision is the capacity to see things as they could be. This is what I'm talking about, the canon. And the canon has milk and honey. It is not the reality now, but it is the picture that has been painted in us. A vision attracts cooperation. So uh, visionary leadership motivates others to submit their energies, skills, in a corporate commitment to achieving a noble vision. My comments always to leaders is this, people do not give to people, they give to vision. People do not commit to people, they commit to vision. So if you can be able to sell a vision, then it can be able to attract cooperation because people want to be attached to something that is giving them more value, even beyond the person that they are looking at. So vision will attract cooperation. Vision makes activities meaningful. Every activity has to add up to something. And uh, for visionary leaders, when you're talking about our own activities, one question we always ask, what is the linkage to the vision? Yeah, some of us uh, who work with government, now we are being driven by vision 2030. And I think there is no resource that will be allocated if the project is not aligned to the vision 2030. So it has aligned all the activities, all the projects, they are now uh, adding up to a common, a common uh, goal. And I think this is very important. So uh, that is uh, the, the ninth principle. The 10th principle, we are talking about lack of visionary leadership is a drawback in society. Most of the challenges we are facing, they can be attributed to issues of vision. In terms of having hopelessness in communities, insecurity, uh, poor self-concept, emotional trauma, uh, depression, a lot of issues. Uh, they, 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 this can be one of the factors that is contributing to some of these challenges. Uh, leadership translates vision to reality. Uh, Warren Bennis is a common uh, factor in when it comes to issues of leadership. In his words, he said, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. So purely when you're talking about leadership, there has to be a vision. And the journey is how do we get into the destination? How do we move to the destination? The last uh, principle of leadership regarding to vision is that vision leads the leader. We are leading, but we are being led. And what is leading us is the vision. Yeah. So uh, Elias, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Elias. Pastor, it seems we were left with you uh, in terms of audio communication. No, I see, I see Charles is there. Charles is surely there. Yeah, Charles, and, I think. Uh, Njau is also there, but we have no signal. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I'm we hearing hear very well. Mr. Charles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Great, great. Okay, so uh, I don't know. Any comment on those 12 principles that we have mentioned? Maybe you may want to make a comment on any of them or just a general comment? Anybody? 
Be free to make any comment before we move on to the next session. Uh -huh. Any comment? Maybe, Pastor, any comment you may want to mention, or Mr. Njao, or Mr. Elias? I'll just take one and then we move on. It's good to observe when you are new. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, quite uh -huh. insightful. Quite yeah. insightful. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, we'll continue building up. Uh, let's yeah. move on to the next uh, the next uh, topic within the same the power of vision in leadership, and uh, we look at this in this session is more of we're doing an analysis on some of these uh, concepts. So there is a lot of uh, uh, reference, and I think this is really good because we always want to know how are other leaders thinking so that we can be able to grow our own capacity and it comes through information. So we look at some of the characteristics of vision and uh, this one I'll be brief. I won't uh, dwell on it so much. Uh, those of us who have manual, I think we can uh, go back and refer. So uh, five, there are five characteristics uh, of a vision. And one is that vision contrasts present reality with the future expectation. This is like telling the children of Israel, is Israel, there is a better land when they are in captivity. It's a contrast. Because what I'm seeing and what you are telling me or what I'm talking about, there is a very big gap. And this is the language of vision because it's not where we are it's where we are going so there is always a contradict or there is a contrast and uh, it's a characteristic of a vision so if we are talking about a vision that doesn't really look like it looks like the real the where we are then there might be some gaps either we are dreaming small or we there has to be something so that vision that we are talking about, maybe the future organization we are talking about, when you're talking about it, it looks scaring in a way. And uh, basically we are saying vision paints a picture of the future that contrasts current state of prevailing uh, reality. Uh, the size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. And I think that's, that's the language of vision. And if your dreams do not scare you, they are not big enough. These are words of uh, Ellen Johnson. I think this is a common figure also when it comes to issues of, of leadership. The second uh, characteristic of a vision is that vision confronts sense of comfort, brings some sense of uh, chillness. I think when I started pursuing what I'm pursuing now, it took time even for me to start believing it. Yeah, I had to keep on talking about it, uh, sharing about it. Sometimes you, you talk to a group, you discuss with a group your vision, and then you get back to the house and you wonder, what was I saying? Uh, it's still trying to, you're still trying to get into your emotions, into your will, into your soul. And because it's not your current reality, even you, the visionary, there is uh, some sort of a struggle because it's moving you from the comfort of the current reality. So a vision does not comfort. Actually, it disrupts the comfort and it shrinks the comfort zone. So uh, this is common. We'll experience this. I think maybe some of us have already experienced it. But in this program, our objective is that by the end of the program, uh, everybody has to clearly come up with their vision 
Either it might be person, personal, it might be in the corporate where you're working with, you, you realize maybe something was, something was becoming blur when it comes to issues of uh, vision. Vision conceives new opportunities. Yeah? Vision is an incubator of creativity and innovation. There are opportunities that can only be unveiled to us the moment we capture a vision. Yeah, and we started by defining what a vision is. So I, I hope we can still continue linking what we are talking about with our initial uh, definition of what a vision is all about. But we are saying that, for example, if I talk about the issues of leadership, global leadership network, and uh, the vision of training leaders, equipping leaders, there are opportunities that have come by capturing this vision. So there are some opportunities that will only be unveiled the moment we connect with that potential that is in us, that is aligned to a vision that we are pursuing to fulfill a given purpose. So vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. You talk about something and it's only you who can see. But uh, in uh, lesson, lesson 16, we'll be talking about effective communication because it's not enough to capture a vision. We need also to be able to, to sell the vision. Uh, and the next uh, characteristic of a vision, vision connects to resources. Yeah, if you're not sure what you are looking for, you will not see it when it is right with you. When you believe in your vision and act, it begins to attract required resources. Yeah, so I talked about uh, Vision 2030 for Kenya. And basically, there are resources that are there to finance projects that are aligned to Vision 2030. And when you're talking about, uh, for us, most of us or all of us are born again, or we belong to the kingdom of God, so there is that divine vision that we capture, and I'm sure there is also resources that are, are connected to, to that vision uh, by God himself. So vision connects resources. If you, are, you have a project that does not support vision 2030, there will be no resources. There will be no resources because it doesn't connect. And maybe even in the, in the church setup, it's something that we need to look at maybe the, the, what we are doing and the vision that we are pursuing, uh, the activities we are pursuing. Uh, might we be struggling because of our mismatch? Something that is important to uh, think about. So uh, vision concentrates and focuses energy, time and resources, very important. A person of vision or a visionary leader will be very cautious about their time about their resources and about their energy because they, are, they, they, they must be spent uh, prudently. They must be spent prudently and they have to be somewhere where there is value in terms of their vision or in terms of uh, fulfilling the vision to the people they are serving. So this is really important. And uh, this is why we always say that when you capture a vision in life, you start living a simple life. Yeah, Mr. Njau, is that true? Yes, yes, very uh, true. I think you simplify your life. I realize personally, I, I cut off a lot of things and I think I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, I was telling the class last time, I was all over in one business, another business, but after sometimes I try to look at the dots the, the, the line, there was no line forming. And I think I realize I don't have to do too much. <laughs> Sometimes you try to draw a line on your activities and you realize some activities are outside the line. They can't join. So, uh, and you have to decide, I have to simplify, but you simplify, but you, you compound the impact. That's the beauty. Yeah, so the little you do, you realize the impact is, is, is really great. And also the fulfillment, uh, which are very important uh, factors uh, to us as leaders. So, uh -huh. so those are, those are the, 
the five characteristics of a vision. Maybe we'll be brainstorming about them. Uh, unless there is maybe any comment or any question. One of the challenges to Napata on the online is also we are trying to be very cautious on time. So we might move a bit fast. Uh, I apologize for that. I think those of us who we have, we had the physical meeting, we, we remember we had a lot of engagements in the class and a lot of teamwork and uh, team activities. So those are some of the disadvantages that we're having with technology, but we appreciate it all the same. So uh, any comment, observation, before we move to the last part? Uh, these characteristics, they are very strong. They yeah. make someone, this one, Never limit your vision based on your current result and to be the comfort zone. Yeah. But these five characteristics, they are very good. Yeah. Makes uh, someone to move ahead. True. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And one thing we have advocated in our class, we have to create time to think. Uh, if there is something we deny ourselves, is that precious time when I'm thinking not because I'm having a problem, but because I want to be to know how to be more resourceful. So uh, in our meditation period, let's peruse this manual again because I'm not I, I'm not handling everything. So peruse the manual and get deeper uh, to those points again, uh, and then. Let's try to connect the dots in our lives. What are the dots adding to? Are there dots that are outside the line? And how do we start working on uh, resolving some of those issues? So the second part is uh, enablers of vision. There are six enablers of a vision, which we have talked about in this uh, manual. And the first one is focus. Leaders maintain a point of concentration and attention. What is my point of concentration? What if I look at my life, is there a point of concentration in terms of the energy that we have talked about, in terms of the resources, in terms of relationships? So uh, an enabler of vision is that there has to be focus and this will, this will be able to actualize the vision that you are pursuing. This basically comes with a lot of pruning of uh, activities, relationships, resources, expenditure, many, many things will uh, come into focus when you're talking about uh, focus. Uh, I think the second statement, I don't need to deliberate, patience. If there is something that uh, is critical when it comes to issues of vision is patience because vision is full of processes and uh, processes are always not that interesting because they take time. Sometimes they, there's a lot of transformation. So people who have patience will always win and vision unfolds step by step. When I'm talking to others, I tell them don't write a book overnight break it down. Otherwise, if you want to write it in a, in, in a short period, or you want to lump sum the whole thing, you will never achieve anything. You break it in maybe even to pages, into chapters. It's the same way with the vision. If we unfold it and we start looking at it as a chain, as a process, then we'll not, it will not scare us. We can start uh, pursuing it as it unfolds slowly by slowly. Faith, uh, I cannot deliver this. Faith keeps hope alive. So a person of vision without faith, then this a vision becomes a mountain that can never be climbed. Because we are seeing something that is not real in terms of tangible. It's like Hebrews 11. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. 
So we are hoping that one day we'll be able to transform the world by equipping leaders, but we can't see it. But we are hoping that maybe five years, 10 years to come, there will be leaders who will be transformational in society. So faith, uh, vision equals faith, and faith is the light that guides the leader through the darkness. There will be a lot of periods of darkness. Sometimes you're going through a tunnel and there is no light. And that time, all that will keep us is that act of faith. Uh, the, the, the fourth one is resilience, elasticity. You have to be, we have to stretch, stretch in terms of our thinking, stretch in terms of our energy, and come back power. When we are pushed down, we have to bounce back. Like now, I think a lot of lives, a lot of organizations will be pushed down. So how do we bounce back? What will enable us to bounce back is the resilience. And it has to be connected to vision. So vision demands endurance, and it's not those who are swift, but those who endure to the end, those who are able to keep and maintain the pace. Uh, the second, the, 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 the fifth enabler is positivity. Much of what we see in the world is a reflection of, is a reflection of how we feel inside. Mm. A common statement by James Allen, or also you can refer it in, the, in Proverbs, as a man thinketh, so is he. So positivity, what we incubate in us, what we accommodate in us can neither blur the vision or enlighten the vision. So I think uh, that positivity, and the good thing is that a vision, because the picture is always good, it's easier to generate positivity along the way. The sixth enabler is love. Leadership is an influence generated by passion, motivated by vision. So, uh, that love in terms of serving humanity makes us to remain attached to the vision. Uh -huh. The last part, we'll talk about uh, derailers of vision, understanding and overcoming vision derailers. What can derail a vision? Either starting or a vision that is already in progress. This is the last part that uh, we look at. Sorry, I said I had mentioned the other one, the last one, but this is the last chapter. We look at uh, the about ten, but I just mentioned them in three. the ten derailers vision. That's the subtopic: understanding and overcoming vision derailers, both intrinsic in us. Those there are some derailers that are within us. And there are some derailers that will come from external uh, factors. So if you are aware of potential obstacles, you can call them even obstacles, that can derail your vision ahead of time, will be prepared to recognize and overcome or be able to manage them. So this is why it's important to uh, flush them out so that when we see them, we know them. When we see them, we can identify them and label them as derailers. So some of the major derailers of vision, uh, we are talking about uh, ordinariness. We're talking about being ordinary, where we don't, I don't feel I want to be extraordinary. I don't want to be different. Sometimes different from the people that I know or from the person that I've known myself to be. We mentioned vision it will also make us uncomfortable. And that is what we are talking about. You are no longer ordinary or in the normal state, it's shifting you. So, but we always want to be where we know, where we know. The brain always wants to be comfortable or it's comfortable with the familiar. So the moment we start trying to move from the familiar, then that becomes a derailer. There is that urge to remain where we have been or the person that we have been. 
distractions will be very common either along the way or even before starting the vision compromise uh, indecision and also the past sometimes the past uh, it 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 uh, shapes us in a way that we, we we sometimes we have challenges of thinking differently yeah? so that aspect of um, the past or even the lack of vision itself if you have not captured a vision in life it's also a derailer because it will delay us from when do we start when do we start moving yeah so uh but uh, in details in details i will analyze some other derailers lack of clarity vision is specific yeah vision is specific and nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific so we might capture a vision but you realize there is there is no clarity in other words it might not be a vision in uh, in terms of the elements of a vision but to you as a person you you might be assuming that you are already pursuing uh, a vision. In other words, I think we need to, well, the moment you capture a vision, it has to be very clear and uh, very specific. That is how it becomes dynamic. And a clear distinction between vision, mission, and ambition. In the last class, we went through some distinct, uh, some distinct uh, differences of vision and ambition. Is a thin line between, and uh, when you are pursuing or being driven by ambition, there is a limitation of how much, how far you can go, and how far you can serve. But when you're driven by a vision, there is an extent of how far you can go because of the weight of the vision. So this, and if there is, it's unclear of what you are pursuing, uh, then or you, you you just reach at a level of discussing a mission without getting into the vision uh, itself, then that can be a derailer. So a vision is precise and has specific emphasis and definable uh, boundaries. So indecision, I've talked about this, living with prolonged indecision. And I think this has really affected many people. Sometimes we are in very comfortable states or environment, you try to make a decision and it's very hard. Uh, last year, uh, together with my family, we made a very difficult, we are moving from a very comfortable state in terms of where we were uh, fellowshipping, but we, because of the vision that we are pursuing, we felt we need to do some adjustments in, in terms of the environment of where we are fellowshipping. And it was not easy even explaining to the bishop that we were serving under, it was very, very difficult. But we had to make a decision. And that is why we are able to do whatever we are doing today. It's the environment where we have moved in and the vision we are pursuing, there is some linkage. Yeah, so uh, there will be a lot of hard decisions to make. Uh, the fourth derailer is excuses instead of intentional actions. And in life, what counts is results and impact, not excuses and reasons. So uh, there, sometimes we have a lot of uh, excuses and a lot of reasons to stay where we are or to stay in the ordinary state or the comfort state. There will always be enough reasons. Number five, it's a very interesting one. One derailer of vision is perfectionism. We call them perfect starters. I will only start when I'm 100% sure. Yeah? This is a big derailer. I will make a move when I'm 100% sure. In that uh, state, I'm sure it will be almost impossible to ever, cut, to ever start pursuing your personal vision in life. So uh, we always... Martin Luther said, you climb the first stairs for you to be able to see there what is ahead of you. So sometimes we'll make these moves. You saw something. You saw, uh, you saw the canon. The picture of canon was painted in, your, in, in, in you. 
and you saw milk and honey, but the journey is unclear. So everything is not perfect, but you have to start making the, the moves towards the land of Canaan. And, and that, this is a language of vision. So perfectionism is a derailer vision. Uh, the other derailer, you're talking about failure to close, to close, close off other options. There will be always more than one options. Attempting to do too much, being too broad, pursuing too much leads uh, to average or mediocre lifestyle. So there will be a lot of uh, issues, a lot of uh, projects, a lot of relationships, these a lot of gaps to close in. And it takes courage to start saying no to this and yes to this. So this is what I'm talking about, failure to close off uh, other options. There will be always more than one option. I'm sure. I, yes, this. Number seven, not recognizing the cost of vision because vision demands diligence. There is no uh, lazy person, I put it in quote, who can ever catch a vision because it's labor. Labor in terms of thinking, labor in terms of your own relationship with God, labor in terms of uh, even knowledge. Like now, this is labor. <laughs> For us, we have struggled to be online. It's really a lot of labor. Some, of, some they can hear, they can see, but they can't talk, but they are there. Yeah, so <laughs> to be able to really get things moving, uh, and I think this is why in the triangle of success, we talk about the small percentage on top there, because the journey going up is never easy. And uh, when people, someone capture, catches a vision, they are really different. Uh, I always talk about uh, people that we have known and read about, people that pursued greater in their own personal life. Uh, the examples that have been very common in our classes, uh, we've been talking about people like Mother Teresa, we've been talking about people like uh, Nelson Mandela, we've been talking about probably our own uh, president, the, the former president, and many others. So there is labor that comes with vision. Number eight is lack of knowledge. I have mentioned this. Vision derailed for lack of knowledge. Knowledge drives visions. So many visions have aborted for lack of knowledge. Yeah, uh, Succumbing to external forces. Criticism. Opposition. These ones will always be part and parcel of us. Because people, they have known you and they want you to remain who you are. So the moment you are, you are manifesting a different person, as much as you are not comfortable with yourself, even them, they are not comfortable with you transforming. So the vision in our hearts needs to be larger than any criticism or opposition that comes against it to persist. So opposition will be internal and opposition will also be external. Failure to collaborate. Uh, if there is a common term now, and I think, uh, uh, Pastor, you can attest to this, even in the business arena, collaboration now is very key. You focus on your core area, I focus on my core, we work together, we deliver, and we are all winners. So, failure to collaborate, like now, we are in this together so that we can be able to compound the impact together. So if we don't collaborate, I run my own race, you run your own race, it is still good, but these races, there is a way we can be able to link them together and then we can be able to uh, perform more. So plants need soil to keep growing, birds need air, fish needs water, visions or vision needs people. Great visions are not a one-man business. They demand collaboration. 
one is too small a number to achieve success. Yeah, so that's the last part of um, this session. Uh, and I think I just want to probably um, appreciate all of you for coming on board. And I just want to continue challenging us that in this season, we can come out very different, but it will be based on the decisions that we are making now. And my challenge has been to the leaders that crisis does not mean stop. It means think probably different. It means probably transition some habits, transition some strategies so that we can be able to adapt to the new, uh, to the new lifestyle or to the new prevailing uh, condition. So even in this class, this has been our call that we are not going to stop, but we are going to metamorphosize ourselves and the strategies that we are using. We have to move online to keep on making those steps. We better uh, do that because we never know how long we shall be this. We are praying and we are hoping it ends quickly, but uh, we that's all that we can do. Uh, but at the same time, from our own, uh, our own capacity, we can look at the trends and see what are the new doors that are coming up, which we can be able to tap into. So I want to close there. I want to stop there. And I want to really appreciate you. And I will take uh, just one comment from each person. Those, of, those who can listen, uh, those who are hearing me, and they can be able to communicate back. If you can't, maybe your mic has problem or whatever. If I just mention your name, you can wave so that I can know we've been together. But uh, if you can uh, communicate back, uh, just one or two state sentence, it will be good for this session. Now let me start with, uh, oh, Mr. Charles is together with us. Thank you so much, Mr. Charles. <laughs> I will visit you and see where the problem is. So that we resolve it. Okay, so that's our. <laughs> uh, Mr. Njau? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, loud. Loud and clear. <laughs> uh, fine, fine. Now, about this lesson, what I have got very clear it is the lack of knowledge. Eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, knowledge drives vision. Mm -hmm. So everybody should be knowledgeable in the field he's pursuing so that you can drive your vision. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Njau. Knowledge is a driver of vision. Yes. Uh, yeah, Pastor. <laughs> uh, first, may I say thank you. Uh, it's uh, been a, a pleasure and uh, quite informative. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I tried to log in by the time I managed, uh, you, you people had finished. It oh. took me about <laughs> one and a half hours. Oh. Uh, for today, I've picked quite a lot, uh, quite a lot. Uh, we finished with understanding and overcoming the derailers. And uh, well, well, I think I think there's some more engagement we need to to lay over here. Like the lack of clarity on our vision. If somebody's lacking clarity, mm -hmm. how can such a person be helped? And the, and the like. Uh, suppose there is a leader who, who thinks has a vision, but it is not very clear how to help such a person. Uh, if somebody is having that indecision, more often than not, indecision is brought about when somebody has two things, he thinks he should pursue this or that. And then again, how do you help such a person? So I, I don't know that that's, that will be dealt in another session. I don't think we have time to ask and deal with those questions, but. Uh, well, what I've gotten for today, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I know the point at which you uh, joined us, there might be some few dots that um, needs to be connected. Uh, as I said, yeah. this is part two. But uh, if you will continue with us in the next sessions, we'll be able to maybe get more clearer. Uh, I will be explaining about the project that each group is supposed to undertake. We have 
we have some groups. We've divided uh, the class into groups and they will be working on some projects. And uh, one of it is to come up with a clear vision. So we'll be able to analyze whatever they are presenting and it will be able to shed more light on the question that you have, uh, you, you, you have meant. You have okay. Talked about. Uh, Mr. Elias, can you hear me? Yes, you are very audible. Karibu sana, your comments, please. Okay, decision has been good. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Of course, there are challenges um, we're experiencing in standing network. But again, it's normal. Yeah. And then, okay, one thing that came clear in, okay, in what you are talking about, um, the vision trailers, mm. I learned that um, we have uh, external forces that can hinder someone's vision. And in our, in our case, it's, let's say, like in our case, it's COVID-19. But again, our vision is very clear. So again, we have to consider and do what's right, mm. even though uh, even though the external forces is there, the opposition is there. But again, we have to our vision is clear, and we have to persist and do everything right to make sure that at least we don't get stagnant. Mm. Okay, so I don't want to talk much. It's okay now. Yeah. Thank okay. You so yeah. Thank you. Okay. For Thank you for those okay. comments. Uh, okay. We'll pick on from here uh, in the next session. Next session, we'll be talking about uh, we'll be talking about the the power of purpose in leadership. This will also be another very important topic. Uh, but uh, for now, let's project our eyes on the vision. It will take us through this period. Yeah, it will take us through this period. Uh, this has been my, my plea to leaders. You better adjust strategies, but don't lose sight on the vision. Change strategies, adopt new strategies, uh, sometimes you might even uh, delay, uh, delay some steps that you would have already taken. Like, for example, this class is supposed to, we're supposed to have finished, but we have delayed a bit, but we're still moving to be able to attain uh, the vision. So the moment we paint that clear personal vision or organizational vision, it is what will keep us moving, even in this moment of COVID. 19 and beyond. So thank you so much for joining the class. Uh, please let's share on WhatsApp, whatever you have learned, whatever you feel others should be able to uh, pick from today's class. Uh, feel free to post something. I will upload this uh, YouTube video on, uh, uh, I'll upload this, vid uh, this session on YouTube and then I'll be able to share the link so that others can be able to, to, catch, to catch up. And uh, I request my wife to close with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for giving us a good time. We honor your name and glorify you. Even for teaching us this evening, Jehovah God, through your Holy Spirit. We pray, Jehovah God, that we may be able to exercise whatever we have learned for the glory and for the honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, thank you, Mama. Have a good night. No, okay, okay, good bye. night, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Baba, mm, Samia. Mm, Samia. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>